Hello and welcome to the Slayshot channel. Today I have a real treat for you and also I will very politely ask you for a small favor. And by the way, we're not filming outside because on this 1st of April the weather out there is, uh, well, peculiar. <laughs> Remember that one year ago I spent nine weeks in the south of England to film 10 episodes of Backyard Ballistics. All those episodes have now been aired on the Outdoor Channel and uh, they were extremely well received to my great appreciation. Now, for the first time, all 10 episodes can be streamed from anywhere on the planet on the MOTV platform, that is Outdoor Channel's uh, streaming platform. Uh, from April 1st onwards, all those episodes are available. MOTV is well known to most people that really are into guns and weapons because all of the cool gun shows are on there. All of them. And I, I love most of them. <laughs> More good news. <laughs> Believe it or not, but the first episode, The Cannon of Carnage, is available for free. So you don't even have to register. You can just simply watch it. Uh, put the link down there for you. See me building this huge cannon that can actually fire a heavy iron ball more than 200 meters far and then watch me destroying stuff with it. And maybe afterwards you want to watch the other nine episodes. Well, if you use the promo code BB90, then you actually get 90% discount on your first month and you can actually uh, end the subscription at any time. So in effect, this means that if you want to save money, you can actually uh, watch all those nine episodes for just one dollar, one euro or one pound because you get 90% off. There is 10 cents per episode. Is that too much? I hope not. And you won't be disappointed. I can promise that. But to give you an idea about what it's all about, here is the background story of all episodes. Okay, the canon of Carnage, no need to explain it any further, as you can simply watch it by yourself. <laughs> Link in text. Then I had to build a javelin launcher that is able to compete against a full-on Olympic athlete. Well, I actually built two of them. One powered by rubber bands and one powered by a huge amount of air. And that thing was so powerful that when I shot it, the recoil almost broke my back. And I can tell you, it's not easy to break my back. But I was actually in pain for weeks afterwards. On the next yeah. Backyard Ballistics. Oh, we go Olympic. I have a little bit of an idea. We want accuracy and we want power. Fire in the hole. Yeah. It was that powerful. Wow. <laughs> and the effect was very dramatic too. Next on was the stone skimmer. They told me, no big deal. You can use as much rubber as you want and your opponent will only be allowed to use one hand. Right, right. And then they brought the world champion. That is a crazy guy. He can actually throw a stone more than 100 meters far over the surface of the water. And I had to beat that. Well, it was pretty devastating, but I did not give up. Next time, we see if a homemade stone skimmer can take down a champion. We can replicate this almost exactly. You're making me a bit nervous, actually. The suspense is killing me, you guys. Then the Gatling gun challenge. As you know, I love Gatling guns. So I really did my best and, and I made a great rubber powered eight barrel Gatling launcher. But my charming co-host Cheyenne thought it was not powerful enough. So we built an all steel monster with the 10 barrels that was able to shoot uh, arrows with pressurized air. And that thing was so heavy, I was barely able to lift it and I had to fire it like in Terminator mode. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then we shot it at balloons filled with flammable gas and we set the arrows on fire. That was quite a thing to see. <laughs> and then came the most fearsome challenge that I thought I would not be able to master. Because they said, you take a car with no petrol, just a car with engine in there, everything, and you have to accelerate it with rubber bands so that it beats a race car on the 50 meter distance. Wow, I've, I've, and then, then I went and bought serious amounts of rubber. <laughs> Theora Band gold, so much of it. 
And to draw these bands back, we needed an electric uh, winch made for yachts, like for billionaires' yachts. And we actually had to use three full car batteries to power it to draw it back 50 meters. Well, it was also very dangerous because the power behind these bands was just unbelievably high. But actually, our opponent had a 750 horsepower V8 engine, not easy to beat. Next time, we take on a 750 horsepower engine with a slingshot. I have no idea what's going to happen today. Can't wait. Three, two, one! Whoa! Whoa! Then they asked me to build an axe fling. Well, I've done this before and I actually know how to fling an axe with rubber, so that was really not problematic. And I built a seriously powerful one. I built one that can throw an axe harder than any superhero. <laughs> but then came the challenge and it was all about accuracy. Power was not completely not interesting at all. So, uh, well, I did my best and uh, I had a really tough opponent. Boy, that guy can throw an axe. The art of axe throwing has been honed over thousands of years. There you go. I'll go hide. But can a machine take on a professional? There is no way that they could have built an axe for a machine that is better than those of you who are into prepping will love the next episode because they just drove us into the woods and there was a shed and they said well guess what it's the zombie apocalypse and you have to defend yourself by making weapons from stuff that you find inside of that shed that was uh, interesting because then Cheyenne went ahead and made a full coke can cannon uh, powered by uh, some kind of black powder found from firecrackers and I went ahead and made a full-on handgun actually that would ignite the powder charge with regular matches. So I built a match lock for that and the effect was truly devastating. It's going to be an improvised to survive situation. We're going to have to quickly figure out what we can use inside of this shed in order to survive a zombie apocalypse. The next one is poor joy for those who love complex homemade mechanisms because it's all about machine gun crossbows. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I built one and I loved it, but Cheyenne said, nah, nah, it's not powerful enough. So I had to start from scratch and build one with a full-size crossbow bow limb set and still going full auto. And then I had to compete against three, three experienced crossbow people. And uh, these guys were good. And I had to beat them hitting six pressurized bottles that have been standing quite far away from each other. These guys were good. But were they good enough for the machine gun crossbow? Well, you go and find out by yourself. Our task is to shoot like 30 of those into the target at that power within like five seconds. Let's get to it. Can a machine gun crossbow stack up against the pros? Episode 9 was very special because the task was go and make a ballista. So a serious piece of ancient artillery <laughs> shooting a huge spear. Well, well, I've used a ton of rubber for that monster too. And it came out great, I think. And in the end, I had to compete against a veritable cannon. And the challenge was who can destroy a small fortress? faster, the, the ballista or the cannon. Well, I cheated a little bit and set the spares on fire. <laughs> but then nobody said I can't use fire. Can we make a backyard ballistics ballista that's even better Go! than the ones created by the mighty Roman Empire? Right out of Sparta. <laughs> Burn for me, baby. Last but not least, a spare gun challenge. So I had to compete in an underwater shooting tournament against Maxime Blondel, a professional spare gun hunter from out of France. Uh, and he was crazy good. And there was no way that I could beat him just the regular way. So I cheated a little bit and made a two-shot version. <laughs> well, I didn't break any rules. On the next Backyard Ballistics. Woo! Can a homemade spear gun take on a professional? Underwater launchers are a completely different thing. The first one to destroy three targets wins. So those are the 10 episodes. Um, and I hope that you like them. Because now comes the part where I'm asking you for a favor. 
Can you spend one euro, one dollar or one pound and subscribe to MOTV for at least a month? And then go watch my show? Because we have pitched another season to them. This time, this time to be filmed in the US, hopefully in the summer <laughs> or somewhere warm. Uh, because uh, I want to do gun stuff. So I want to do, build crazy contraptions using gunpowder. And I can't do this anywhere in Europe. And I totally believe that if enough people go and subscribe because of my first episodes, then they will give me uh, a chance to film season two. And that would be amazing. So please, please go and follow the link. And then watch the first free episode, Canon of Carnage. And if you like it, then subscribe to MOTV for me. Uh, remember, the BB90 promo code gives you 90% of a discount. I would absolutely love to do season two. And maybe, maybe you can help me doing that. I really appreciate your help. <laughs> so, thanks. Bye-bye from snowy Germany.